Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Dimitri Johnson, and you're listening to MMALatestNews.com. It's time to roll, baby. Hello, and welcome back to Split Decision. My name is Jay Sweet, and this is Mitch Ivey, and we've got an absolutely stacked show for you today. Of course, we're talking the big one. We're going to New York City. It's Madison Square Garden. We thought it was off, but now it's on. Nate Diaz versus Jorge Masvidal, the baddest motherfucker title. We're all buzzing for it. We talk all about... For me, the tragedy that happened to Ben Askren, because I, I love the funky one, but it wasn't to be for him in Singapore. We talk Bellator. We say a little bit of a farewell to Anthony Crawler. We talk all things Conor McGregor, from allegations to his potential next career move. And, of course, we talk a little bit about the welterweight Grand Prix. But, Mitch, first things first, how are we today? Not too bad, not too bad. We've had a bumper weekend of fights. We've got another weekend coming up with some th- cracking fights. That UFC 244 card is incredible. And we've got Anthony Crawford, of course, fighting in Manchester for the last time. It's going to be a good week. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And let's kick it off with Saturday. And I don't know about you, Mitch, but I was on a 21st on Friday night in Manchester. I finished the night. I got up, got the train back to Preston, allegedly (laughs) allegedly tripped back, settled down for an afternoon of fights. And I absolutely love just that sort of a midday festival of fights. Yeah, it was all, it was awesome having it at such a time, but it felt it felt abnormal. Normally, you're, as a UK fan, you're there at one a.m. getting prepared for the fights. You're geared up. You've been waiting all that Saturday to get to the, the evening time to mm. to build up to these fights, as we will be at this weekend. But having it in the morning, it's almost it's not normal, is it? I like it's it. I fun. like having like a sausage bar from booze <laughs> whilst I watch my fights. I prefer it because you know, in the middle of the night, it's fuck. It's disgusting, isn't it, being an MMA fan from England. It's horrible. I mean, it's a big job just getting to the main card. It starts at three. <laughs> it's absolute torture. Your Pringles are already gone by the time you get to the definitely, prelims. Definitely, definitely. It's a shocker. So having it at a nice time is good for UK fans. And first things first, let's talk Ben Askren. He had so much hype behind him coming into the UFC. He'd done so much at one, so much in Bellator. He was an Olympian, an NCAA Division One champion. He had all the hype behind him in the world. For years and years and years, he had this sort of debate and frosty relationship mm-hmm. with Dana White. We finally got him to the UFC. We're thinking, he's got to finally do something. We've got to see him fight the best. Is there a fight with, you know, Colby Covington, Kamara Usman, Marty from Nebraska? <laughs> he did all this trash talk. These fights were built... And then it all went wrong off a flying knee off Jorge Masvidal. In yeah. fact, he nearly died in his first fight against Robbie Law. It was impressive that he just got through that and he executed the bulldog choke. But things just haven't worked for Ben Askren. And we need to think now, was it a case of him being overhyped, doing really well in lesser organisations than the UFC? Or is he just 37 years old and he came into the sport far too late? I think it's a mixture of all those things, really. I was thinking, I was talking to you off camera and saying, is there a bit of the Ronda Rousey effect where he's a fantastic at one aspect of MMA, but his striking didn't look great. He was poor against Damian Meyer with his striking. He's a fantastic wrestler, as Rousey was with judo. She was undefeated until she really came into that top tier of the opponents, the Holly Holmes, Amanda Nunes, and she got exposed. And are we seeing that with Askren? I don't want to say exposed, because the Jorge Masvidal thing was just a flying knee, weren't it? Jorge Masvidal... It's weird to say he executed the perfect game plan because it lasted not five seconds, let's be realistic. It lasted two (laughs) seconds. That's when the knee landed. But it was perfect. He was practicing for that and it was executed as well as it possibly could have been. Ben Askren was like as stiff as a fucking board, weren't he? (laughs) But... uh... (laughs) Masvidal's got a lot of explaining to do this year. Do you remember 10 months ago we were looking at Darren Till versus Ben Askren for a potential title contender decider and he just wiped that all out. Yeah, I know. I mean, I don't necessarily... I mean... I never rated Jorge Masvidal that highly, but he's completely proved me wrong. Don't don't get me wrong. I thought he was a very, very good fighter, but I didn't think he was ever going to be you know, a world title right. challenger. And he's completely proved me wrong. He wiped out Darren Till <laughs> with a devastating left hook. He flying need Ben Askren and broke my heart. But he's just on such good form at the moment, Jorge Masvidal. And he's going into this weekend in the best place he's ever yeah, been in his career. I think I saw a stat that his Twitter following is times by five. That's, in the last year. That's incredible. And he's he's broken the news. Now, he was on some sort of reality show last year. So obviously, he lost to Thompson back at UFC 217. Took a year out and he's come back and he's just been on fire. And he's really, really taken the crowd. And, you know, he's the Cuban Jesus and the resurrection is real at the moment. And it's going to be incredible to see him in the Big Apple. Absolutely. But just going back briefly to Ben Askren, you said that his striking didn't look great. Let's be honest. His striking looked terrible. 
It's like watching a child who's just learned how to stretch, like doing like his first boxing yeah. class. It's, yeah, it was poor. It's he is so incredibly talented as a wrestler. He's unbelievable. I remember, I think it was his takedown in the second round. I didn't even know how he's got his body into that position. It's ridiculous. You know, I've done a bit of wrestling. I don't mm-hmm. have a fucking clue how he's managed that. <laughs> this guy's on such a ridiculous high level of wrestling. It's weird to see how poor his striking is. It doesn't look a lot better than CM Punk's. It's absolutely <laughs> that, awful. That, I mean, his spinning back fist was his spinning back fist attempt was hilarious. I've seen it back a few times on Twitter. It was quite yeah. enjoyable to watch. But I really like Ben Askren, the funky one, and it's a shame that things haven't worked out for him. He's two losses down. He's considering retirement. Is this something he should do? It's it's an interesting one. He is thirty seven years old. And I know uh, Charles Sonnen, who I watch his podcast religiously, he said that he's actually training uh, some of the world and Olympic future Olympians in wrestling. So maybe his time hasn't been utilised proficiently in striking and his other aspects. And, you know, his re- wrestling is his first nature and he's been able to coach that. So potentially, he's 37 years old, he could retire and go straight into that coaching role, maybe bring some, some of the future that we're going to see in the UFC especially in the wrestling aspects, that is coming back into the forefront of MMA at the moment. Jiu-Jitsu is probably just a little bit ahead, but, you know, all our champions are incredible wrestlers. As you go, Kamaru Usman, Khabib, you know, DC was... Stipe is not uh, as such as a good wrestler, but he's still... I mean, he's an rest, NCAA champion, Stipe Miocic. So, you know, he, he c- I think he should probably retire or potentially go back down to another organisation, perhaps, mm-hmm. like Bellator, where... Where he did so well, obviously he came to the UFC undefeated, and you know what happened with Robbie Lawler? Did he lose? Was he out or not? And he's just lost two fights recently, so it's sad to see. One person I do feel sorry for is Demetrius Johnson, who got put in this trade, and it's worked out brilliant. It's worked for out him. brilliant for him. It's one he's of the living at moves. large in Japan. <laughs> yeah, he's traveling the world of Asia, one FC champion, of course. And Ben Askren, his career is on the other other end of that spectrum. Yeah, it's, it's gone it's, horrifically it's for, for him. him. But, I mean, I don't want to give him too much criticism. He's been choked out by one of the best jiu-jitsu practitioners in the world. And need in the face in five seconds. <laughs> yeah, and I'll need in the face. In fact, stop making me relive it, Mitch. It was terrifying hey, for me. I was having nightmares for, for three months after that. We saw it on the live stream. It was a great, great night for everyone involved. Other than me. I think I'm the only one who wanted Ben Askren to do well, whereas everybody else wanted him to get exposed. I wanted him to be as good as we all wanted him to be. I wanted Joe Rogan, you know, Brendan Shaw, and all those sort of people who mm-hmm. praised him for years to mm-hmm. have been right. And they might have been 10 years ago, but he's, he's, he's in his late 30s. Your body just can't do what it used to do, even if he hasn't been beat. And let's not forget, he was extremely inactive in between that mm-hmm. one and USC thing. Yeah, there, there was a long time period in, in between that trade. So the rust probably was there. He, you know, he showed such heart. And what he's done brilliantly is he showed his character after losses because obviously he was under the He had mm-hmm. that oh. But he's, he's dealt with these losses so magnificently. He's come out on the Helwani's show literally day after or two days after losing and been flawless with how he's taken the losses. So really, he's shown himself as a good good person in, a, in and outside the Oscar. And it's probably benefited him more than just winning and not being that humble guy. Yeah, perhaps. I get what you're saying. In regards to should he continue, ultimately the decision lies with him. His family obviously needs to have a word. Mm-hmm. He can't be losing week in, week out. But he has lost to two of the best. He's, I've seen people going, oh, he's in the UFC. He's way out of his depth now. He's lost to two of the top 10 fighters in the world. He's not a bad fighter by any stretch of the imagination. His striking isn't great. His grappling's still good enough to compete. So if mm-hmm. you can just grab hold of a lot of people, he's still going to have success. It's just he took somebody down who's an absolute wizard on the ground. And for me, he took them down far too early in the round. The first two rounds, I think he took Damian Mar with like 30 seconds left, so he had enough time to maintain top position. Just but, get that 10 points in. Well, well, essentially, that's what it is. You're just, just point scoring. Point but he's tried to take him down with about two minutes left, and that's a long time to keep somebody like Especially Damian Mar on the yeah, ground for. That's, that's a ridiculous amount of time for someone who's got such good jiu-jitsu. You know, he's probably one of the best in the sport mm. of MMA to, to, to partition uh, jiu-jitsu. And he's got his own scores as well. So, And he's you know, is he 40, 41? He's getting on, Damian. He's Mark, getting yeah. on, and he's still getting the wins in the column. And it's going to be interesting for Askren as well, because he's falling down those rankings now. I think, again, going back to Sun and referencing Sun, and his, his thing was trying to get a, become a UFC champion. Now, if he drops out of the rankings, that's definitely not happening. He's going the wrong way. So that could be the reason why he stops uh, fighting, perhaps. Yeah, potentially. 
And if it's just not meant to be, it's just not meant to be. And from an ego perspective, it must be weird for him because for 90% of his career, he was unbeaten. Everybody's saying how Mm -hmm. good he is. He has this image of his head of just this incredible wrestler Mm -hmm. who can't be beat, who can't go into the UFC because Dana White doesn't want him. And then that whole perspective that he has on himself, he gets crushed, and that's gone. So he's not, he's gone from everybody, all the hardcore fans thinking he's unbelievable, to them all sort of jumping off the yeah. bandwagon and, and saying he's terrible. Yeah, it must be weird how things change so quickly from you being perceived this brilliant fighter to being perceived as let's face it, a lot of people looking down and saying he's a terrible fighter, which I don't agree with by any stretch of imagination. It's sort Definitely of like not. different perspective, but in Lucas Brown in boxing, Lucas Brown. World champion, went to Russia, beat Ruslan Shegiev, the WBA regular champion, has three years out, comes back in terrible condition, gets wiped out by Dillian White. He's seen as a proper hard operator, and then he's seen as terrible. And mentally, having that shift must be hard to deal with. So I think Ben Askren is coping with it relatively well. Let's move on away from him and to some more welterweights, <laughs> who I think we want to talk about Good more. Segue. They're flawless, aren't they? Flawless. They're flawless. Get in there. Get They're in getting there. there. Uh, Nate Diaz, Jorge Masvidal. Before we talk about the fight... I was absolutely amazed when I saw a statement by Nate Diaz claiming that he's tested positive. I'm like, no, Nate Diaz said everybody's on steroids. It turned out you are as well, Nate. I'm seething with you, Nate. I'm absolutely livid. But he protested his innocence. It turns out it had come from a a vegan supplement. Nate isn't on steroids. All my hope in humanity is restored because it would have gone if Nate had been testing positive. Yeah, that would have been a, a, a big blow to this weekend's card, definitely. I know... There was talk about Leon Edwards possibly being a replacement now. They did have their back and forth back in London, Mazdao and Edwards, but there's just something so perfect about this fight. There's such a mixture. There's no real animosity. It's a, it's two legends of the sport, two absolute warriors, and almost like martyrs of the sport. They they had a fantastic career. They're not quite hit the pinnacle as a, as a world champion, but they come together east versus west, and it's such an amazing I love amazing it I love fight. all like the GTA San Andreas is. posters that are coming out it's just so cool and these people say that they've got 24 losses between the how can they be the baddest motherfuckers let's be honest they just are they just have this persona Masvidal likes to throw that free piece in a sort and Nate Diaz will smoke joints in front of Dana White's face and fucking blow it into him he doesn't care if these men were not fighting in a cage they would be fighting on the streets and there's proof of that for Jorge Masvidal's backyard <laughs> bros with Kimbo Slice that's very true and Nate Diaz of course used to get up to no good in the streets of Stockton. They are very hard men. They are born bred fighters who will fight any man, anytime, anywhere. I'm looking forward to this one. And I've seen people <laughs> going, oh, the UFC's going WWE. We've got Johnny Walker, Corey Anderson on the undercard. The winner of that's going to get a title fight. Brilliant fighters. Why aren't they headlining? You're mental if you think those two men should be headlining. It's all no, about Diaz. Not. It's all about Masvidal. These are the two stars of the sport. These are the two men people mm-hmm. want to see. They're the two... In and around up there with the two biggest names in the sport at this time now. They're coming together. I know that the pay-per-views haven't done great since I've been on it, since I've been on ESPN Plus, but this is a big, big, big card. It's the biggest card now. The next two cards are actually stacked now. Whether that is a reflection of how they've done on ESPN, where they've gone, you know, these next two need to be absolutely stacked with talent because you see what two or five is. We've got uh, Peter Yan versus Faber added to that card. Mariah's Aldo. We've got our three title fights, of course. But coming back to two forty-four. It's actually stacked. They sent a Luke Hayes fighting on there. And we've got two former welterweights in middleweight now with Darren Till versus Kelvin Gastelum. That's going to be an incredible fight in the co-main. And then we've got the BMF title fight. It's, it's going to be incredible. Yeah, we need to talk a little bit about the main event in terms of stylistically, how are we going to break this one down? Who wins it? I mean, Nate Diaz is so incredible on the ground. He's such a... Well... I was going to say he's a very high-level striker, and I'm not sure if he is, but he sort of finds a way, doesn't he? He's such a high output. He'll mm-hmm. drain you down, and he'll find a way to win. Jorge Masvidal's probably more explosive. He's got good submission grappling. I mean, I want Nate Diaz to win this fight. I mean, if you've seen me on the last two watch-alongs, I was supporting Dustin Poirier to beat Khabib, had my heart broken. Yep. I was supporting Robert Whittaker to beat Israel heartbroken. Adesanya, heartbroken. This weekend, heartbroken. I could well be heartbroken <laughs> if I'm on the watch-long. It comes in threes, right? It comes uh, in threes. One of these days, I'm going to see somebody win on the watch-long who right. I want to win. But if I'm going to be honest, those two fights, as much as I wanted Dustin and Bobby to win, I fancied Khabib and Israel to win. And this weekend, I'm in a similar position. I want Nate to win, but I think I'm edging towards Jorge. How do you feel? Yeah, it's one of those ones that's hard, really hard to predict. Now, Diaz has been in some five-round wars, and I'd probably say the longer the fight goes, I'd probably edge it towards Diaz. I think if it's in that first two rounds, I'd probably go through a Mazda win. 
probably with something like a knee or or a good left hook that he did to Darren Till, he's probably more likely to get a knockout. But I'd probably verge towards a submission or a decision for Diaz. And I think he's probably got the 25 minutes in him. He, now, you looked and saw how he did against Anthony Pettis, who is a former champion. He, obviously, he's returned to 170, and he had a little timeout about a year out as well. And he just pieced him up, and it wasn't, it wasn't exactly even. Now, I think that was a three-round fight. So we've got an extra two rounds this time, and it's going to be interesting. I think a five-round fight... I, I have to go for Diaz on this one. Yeah, and Diaz, as you said, pieced up Anthony Pettis, and he does that because he's a born fighter. And when you're a born fighter, the inactivity, I don't think, matters because, let's face it, Nate Diaz has probably had a couple of rumbles back in Stockton mm-hmm. anyway. Mm-hmm. Definitely, and someone who's also been inactive is a certain notorious one who's had his time with Nate Diaz. He's also said that he wants to fight the winner of Diaz or Macedo uh, come 2020 in his most recent press conference. Did you see that, and what did you make of think of I that? did, but first things first, I'm going to address this to the camera. He gave me credit for flawless segues. Did you see that? Yeah. Utterly <laughs> incredible. I mean, you're buzzing with yourself. I know definitely, you're proud of definitely. that. You'll be talking about this once we finish the show. Most but yeah, definitely. Conor McGregor, he's been up to no good. There's a lot of publicity going on at the moment. Obviously, we can't go too in-depth on that. We don't... I mean, either he's one of the worst human beings in the world or <laughs> the greatest thing ever or somebody's lying about him yeah. and it's disgusting we don't it's, know so we can't go into depth until the court case is out in the open definitely. but in terms of his fighting career does he need to be back in the cage for his own mental and physical well-being yes because he's doing more cocaine than fucking Pablo Escobar <laughs> at this point he needs to sort his life out he needs to stop doing stupid things like smashing up Brooklyn windows like fighting old men in bars mm-hmm. stop getting yourself into trouble Connor and I know it's hard to get up in the morning and run when you're wearing silk sheets but there's still so much money on the table for him but something that I was worried about is that he looks about 712 years old now he looks so he looks so old and withered now he's been training obviously he broke his wrist back in April didn't he when there was a build, build up to the Cerrone fight potentially happening and he broke it in sparring so he has been training it's just how hard has he been training yeah. how regularly and also he didn't seem to talk very fluently when I was watching the press conference we know that Conor McGregor is this off the cuff yeah. character this theatrical man an excellent trash talk you know who the fuck is that guy all the stuff he's saying yeah. to Nate Diaz about balloon animals all that sort of stuff he's a great trash talker he couldn't string a sentence together during this hey. press conference. He was like saying he'd agree with a date with the opponent and then he was stuttering, stumbling. He was all over the place. I don't know if he'd had a couple of lines before he went out there, but he just wasn't the usual fluent man he was. He certainly didn't know his lines on the mic this time. But, you know, it's interesting. It's interesting what he's been doing now. You know, it's not because of head traumas, is it? It's not, you know, we've seen... Because of nose engaging. trauma, Mitch. Yeah, nose trauma. Weird. Maybe the brain's been taking damage in that sort of sense. But it's it's... Weird to see his demise over a year, a year or two. Now, you know, when that, t- that 2016 that he had, he thought Diaz twice, obviously lost that one, and then went to become on a double champ, and he fought three times. And everything was sort of set out, even the year before, of course, where he won the interim champion and the featherweight title. That, that two-year period of him was so incredible, incredible. But he only had his sight set on one thing, which was to become the champion, to become one of the best and he was the best in the game on the mic. That's what he got his name from. It blew, he blew up on Twitter so many times for his one-liners, but it's a different sort of one-liner that he's been in the news for recently. Oh, yeah, well, one line or two, three, four. We don't know, Mitch. But um, as you said, I think what made Conor McGregor so lovable to a lot of people is that he had those working-class roots. Obviously, he came through the plumbing apprenticeship. Mm-hmm. He lived on the streets of Dublin. He was just an everyman that people... As, as cocky as he was, he was still somebody that people could relate to. And he to. delivered every single time of what he said to do. Yeah, and now he isn't this everyman. He's getting into cages and assaulting referees. Mm-hmm. He's hitting old men, which is disgusting. It's just allegation after allegation. And he's losing that likability factor. So even when he does come back, he isn't going to have the fanfare he used to. No, and, you know, you see what... You see the... The demise, well, I say the demise of John Jones with, with all the court cases he had. He came to this as such a star. He had all of that, and he was doing this much, much younger than Connor is at this mm. point. He hit that limelight, and it didn't go well for him. He's probably managing it now, although he's still in the news for the some things. And, you know, Connor McGregor's coming up to that 32 year old mark now. His career, if he wants that career in cage lighting, which he's probably not going to have, he's got so many things on the side, he's not, he's not going to be here for four or five years down the line. But that, that window's very narrow now to really build another legacy now he has got you know everyone loves that comeback story and he, he said he wants to fight three times three or three fights in january against someone i think the most probable opponent is probably gaethje or cerrone now he's called out the winner of nate diaz or Masvidal, 
and then he wants to go back to the title against Khabib, Tony Ferguson. If he fights those, is it, if we have a, can you imagine a year or 2020 of Donna Cerrone, Mazadel, and then maybe Khabib again or Tony Ferguson? Yeah, but he, ha- he has to beat them first. Yeah, but I mean, there's every chance he loses that's the such first a one. a good year for a free fight year. It would be, but what happens if he gets cleaned up by Donald Cerrone <laughs> in the first one? I mean, we're in a position now where we don't know how good he is. I mean, he fought it's Khabib true. and looked absolutely terrible. He looked flat footed. He looked dull. He looked like he wasn't on the ball. He looked almost shot, if we're going to be honest with you. So we don't know how much Conor McGregor's got left to give. And we talk about, you know, these comeback stories. And somebody who has got that is Darren Till. Because let's <laughs> face it, he was beat. He's been beat three times in a row. Because we're going to say the Jorge yeah. Masvidal fight, obviously horrific knockout. Tyron Woodley submitted him. And if we're all going to be honest, he didn't win the Wonderboy fight. So yeah, that was pushing, pushing. So he's had three losses. Cuts. He goes absolutely ballistic in Magaluf, robs a taxi or some <laughs> random bloke. But guess what he's done? He's come back, he's in the gym, he's moved up a weight like everybody says. He's, he and he's looking massive. absolutely incredible. He looks massive. If he can beat Kelvin Gastelum, then this is an unbelievable comeback story. Because let's face it, the man's an absolute star. Dana White loves him. He beats Gastelum, he's looking at an Israel Adesanya fight. And what a striking matchup wow. that would be of Muay Thai and kickboxing. <laughs> the man's career isn't over, but I like his attitude of saying, I saw a documentary he did with Nick Pete, and he was saying, you know, this could be the third loss. I might lose again. But the fact that he's willing to take chances and he's got the balls to get in the best with in the world, he's not looking to have an easy fight, to get himself up mm-hmm. in the rankings. He wants mm-hmm. to challenge himself. He wants to be the best fighter in the world. And how can we not respect that from Darren Till? Darren Till's fantastic. He's got that little puddly and uh, sort of demeanour about him where he, he's not scared of anyone. You, you see it so many times now. There was a fight against Mick Perry that was on the table, but he's obviously, his his sort of trajectory of his career went a different path. And obviously we've got the Mazadel fight. But he's such a fantastic man. Again, on the mic, it's, it's so easily easy to like someone who's so good on the mic and de- delivers it. Now, he was unlucky against Woodley. Now, he's admitted himself that he probably got thrown into that opportunity way too fast. He wasn't ready. Now, he's still very young. Mazadel, he could have finished him in that first round. He dropped him and mm. unfortunately just didn't get that finish in that time. And, of course, we, st- we know what happens then. But he fights Gastelum, a former welterweight, a very good wrestler who who looked phenomenal against Israel de Senna into that fifth round. So, should he beat him, he's in a very good position to say... Uh, at least maybe behind Paolo Costa in terms of the title. Absolutely. And let's talk Bellator. Lima, McDonald. I actually called this one right. I'd said Douglas Lima would win this tournament. He has. He looked terrific. I think Rory McDonald now, mm-hmm. he's been an absolute servant to the sport. He's given us those absolute walls with the likes of Robbie Lawler. I think he needs to look at calling a day now. But as for Douglas Lima, he's got a case of being, you know, one of the top three or so welterweights on the planet. Mm-hmm. He's competing with the best. I'd love to see him in the UFC fighting Kamara Osman. We're not going to get it, but we're in that position with Bellator where they go, well, maybe we have the best. I'd still edge towards Kamara, but Bellator have a case. He was absolutely smothered in champagne, 50 cents all over him. He must <laughs> feel like a real star right now, Douglas Lima. You know, it's incredible to see what 50 Cent and Bellator are doing. I was trying to think, what's the craziest sort of celebrity... Uh, sort of collaboration I can, I, I can with, answer, with a sports right organisation. Yeah. It's the fact that they're trying to get Aaron Sharma's off Geordie Shore against <laughs> Jack Swagger from the WWE. Yeah, Jack Swagger's about 20 times the size of Aaron Sharma's. That's absolutely ridiculous. And if they pull that off, that's incredible. But they have, you know, going back to this what weight Grand Prix, Douglas Lima, he beat MVP, gave him his first loss, I believe, in his career. Mm. And he's gone on and won a million dollars. He's now welterweight champion now. He's got two options, perhaps. Roy McDonald for a rubber match. Or MVP, he's fighting in Bellator London uh, in November. Should he get a win, he could come back and say, right, give me another chance. I've grown. I can I can go through this title because that's what MVP wants. Yeah, absolutely. And let's just briefly talk about Jack Swagger because did you see the fight that ended in a no contest? He's thrown some of those blatant knees to the testicles I have ever seen. He threw about yeah, three or brutal. four. And they weren't like, I saw somebody on Twitter at, it's on the inside of the fight. It's not. It's yeah. about as direct a shot as I've ever seen ever. Jack Swagger or Jake Hager, as I, yeah. as I should really be calling him, uh, has nobody to blame but himself for that. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? He's so, he's so raw to the sport, but... You know the rules, and he, obviously he's probably not... I don't know how intentional he 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 meant them to be, but, you know, it's always up, it's difficult when you're in the clinch up against the cage, and deservedly so it got overturned. Uh, or was it no contest, was it? It was no contest, No contest, yeah. yeah I didn't actually see the, the fight this weekend, so I saw it all on, on Twitter, of course, but... Yeah, some brutal kicks. I wouldn't, wouldn't want yeah. to be on the receiving end of those. And I, I think I, I need to make this very clear that 
This isn't an Aaron Chalmers or CM Punk type no. move from Jake Hager. Jake Hager's an illeg- a legitimate all-American yeah. American wrestler who beat Cain Velasquez at Oklahoma. <laughs> They're just the facts. On paper, he's they got... switched careers. You know, sw- switched over, haven't they? Cain's now obviously battering Brock Lesnar in Saudi Arabia. But actually, we could probably do to preview that at some point, so we'll get on <laughs> to that. But, uh, yeah, no, Jake Hager, he has got the wrestling background to get very far in this game, especially in Bellator, where the heavyweight division is extremely thin. He's closer to a Brock Lesnar than he is to these other celebrities that have come into the sport. Wow. Just from watching him, I don't think he's got the talent of a Brock Lesnar. His, his hands, he doesn't seem the most coordinated. So do I see him being a world champion? No. Has he got the wrestling to go far in the sport? Yeah. That's my honest opinion. But let's yeah, talk Paul Daly. True. He proves once again by this absolute dynamite in that left hand. Incredible. He just goes on and on and on. Would you be interested in a Daly MVP rematch? Let's face it, the first one was extremely close. There's a reason why they call him the Semtex. Now, for Paul Daly... Um, I don't want to see the MVP rematch just yet. I'd rather see a narrative build up around the title, whether that's Paul Daly himself going through a title shot or MVP. I think those two meet again in the future, but I think it should probably be through a title, especially with the Grand Prix, how it happened. They went in, were they the first round? They were, they were the quarterfinal match. They were the yeah. quarterfinals together, and obviously we saw what happened. And I'd like to see uh, something on the line for that fight. It's a big fight for the UK. It doesn't need to be in America. They put it in America last time. It, it needs to be in London. It was own money. It needs to be in London, and it needs to be built up around the UK, because that is probably the biggest fight we can get from two UK fighters at the moment. Mm, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Other than a Darren Till, Leon Edwards, which is still in the pipeline at some point, maybe. But Baby Slice, obviously disqualified. Nick Newell, he lost, bless him, because I really like Nick Newell. I like his story, but lost by a split decision. And Frank Mir, of course, the man who I thought was shot mm-hmm. about 10 mm-hmm. years ago, <laughs> somehow gets another win against Roy Nelson, so well done to Frank. You know what? Bellator loved giving us sort of flashbacks, don't they? We've got Fedor versus um, uh, Rampage Jackson coming up soon. That's actually tickled That's me That's an bit. incredible I like fight. I think, I think Rampage should win that. It's almost like a retirement home for fighters. It is, yeah. Now they're taking them back over to Japan. It's like watching Pride from 15 years ago. It's weird. <laughs> hey, can you imagine? They need to take Luke Rockhold. They can take Chris Weidman. We'll do Luke Rockhold, Chris bring Weidman, into rematch. Their, bring them all into Bellator because they are talented. they still got some good fights in them despite what's happening Robbie Lawler would do fantastic over there. You could do it. You could do it. You know what? It's time for a cross promotion, I think. We need the Bellator versus UFC, and it needs to happen within the next year. So I think they've got Rise and Bellator, haven't they, at the end of the year? Mm. But we could do with a good UFC versus Bellator. Cross Absolutely, promotion. Cool, but I, In my personal opinion, every single UFC champion beats every single Bellator champion. That's still the way yeah. I see it. Even Bader versus Mio- Miocic. I think Miocic I think, beats Bader. Yeah, I think Miocic is probably a stronger fight. Now, Bader, is he still the light heavyweight champion? I believe, yeah, champ, yes, champ yes, still. yes, yes. So it depends. Which route does he go now? I think John Jones would. We he's know he's got Jones two fights on one him. night. He's got to fight Miocic <laughs> and then John Jones. Absolute <laughs> shocker. Hey, can you imagine John Jones is heavyweight champion at that time? Then you get heavyweight fight. What, the Bellator champ champ, the UFC champ champ? champ. Yeah. yeah, I fancy John Jones. Winning against both titles. belts. It's also nice to see that John Jones is finally flirting with the idea of fighting Stipe Miocic on yeah. Twitter because I've been waiting so long. He's just been like a high school bully, and he like battering people that are so many levels below him and refusing to go up. Now he might actually go up. Let's see this fight. I've, I don't want to go over and over it again because I say, I say this narrative all the time on this show where I talk about, you know, the good guy versus mm-hmm. the bad guy, the fire man versus the woman abuser. So, uh, woman abuser with his car, obviously. No yeah, domestic course, violence issues. Got to just clarify yeah. in this day and age. But uh, yeah, you get what I'm saying. I think it would be an absolutely huge fight. And let's talk about huge fights going on in Saudi Arabia. We're just going to preview the main two because I can't say I know what's going on exactly on this crown yeah. jewel card. Cain Velasquez, Brock Lesnar, the rematch going on in a WWE <laughs> ring. I mean, Cain won the first time. Should yeah. Cain win again? Or is Brock's ego going to get the better of this one and he'll win in Saudi Arabia? You know what? I've. I've seen partial to build up because it is a good storyline. It's a good storyline to have in the in the WWE. Now it depends what they want to do. I think Kane's probably in it for the long term. I can see them probably building up at WrestleMania. I think that's probably the the pinnacle of where the storyline goes. Now Brock Lesnar's on a good streak. Does he does he win this one and then you go right? It's one one, even though it's not. Mm. It's one one, and then do, uh, WrestleMania Kane Velasquez gets his big moment. DC's in the crowd. He wins the. Let's WWE say title I want the team. tag team. Let you all match. I want let's like drag this out. I want DC doing frog splashes. Now we've got two sort of former MMA fighters. Now we could potentially have a third in there with Tyson Fury saying he wants the to gypsy train. king. 
Tyson Fury, Braun Strowman. It's just been entertaining for Arnett. Tyson Fury is the ultimate showman. And I'll be honest, I really wanted to win this one. Tyson Fury, people say he can't punch. I saw him knock out several security guards. There's clearly <laughs> still power in the fist of Fury. So, uh, you know, it would be nice to see him get a you win on this show. And if anything, it's just blown his profile absolutely out the water. He's given that cut a bit of time to heal. It's good to keep him away mm-hmm. from a boxing ring. Mm-hmm. He's going to be far bigger. If the, uh, WWE have got anything about them, Deontay Wilder's in the crowd, and then Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury do a bit of a face-off. But once his career's over, why don't we see Tyson Fury go full-time in WWE? We yeah. could have so many good... Can you imagine, though, like a triple threat match with Brock, Kane, Aww. and Tyson, three of the hard, Legitimately, three of the hardest, hardest men man. on the planet going back and forth. You know what? Take Braun out, put... Kane in there. Kane, Brock, and then Tyson. That's what I meant. Oh, is that what Kane, you meant? Brock, Tyson. I mean, That'd if you want to throw ridiculous. Braun in there as well, have four men, whatever. Yeah, fatal fatal, fatal four way. Why not? I don't think there's any stipulations in, in this fight. I don't. Is it just, just sledgehammers and steel chairs. Yeah, Let's go back to the it? WWF days uh, and make this serious. <laughs> and have them like Politris Stratus oh, in the it's ring so after. Incre- it's so incredible what WWE are doing. It's, it's incredible. Uh, no, I'm almost speechless thinking that Tyson Fury is fighting this weekend in the WWE. And uh, that, watch along. It, Imagine the numbers. Oh, that's, that, that would be fun. You know, if we get... A watch much, along would genuinely do numbers. I would do it. But, uh, I, you know, I love Tyson. 500 Fury. likes, perhaps. Then we might look into it. I don't know how happy Stephen would be, but 500 likes and... <laughs> we'll do a crowd. We'll do, watch do along. one, yeah. But uh, Tyson Fury, I think he'll probably win uh, over Braun Strowman. And I think it'll have been an absolute masterminded move by ESPN to help build the pay-per-view. It's interesting, because obviously uh, with... Um, Obviously, it's on the WWE Network, but they just moved. Is he on the Fox or is he on the uh, USA Network at the moment? He, with Raw, Tyson Fury's with ESPN and Top Rank. Yeah. And the actual pay per view w- for Deontay Wilder will be a Showtime ESPN joint okay, pay per view. Yeah. And obviously, because we've had uh, with the Showtime, uh, not Showtime, but the showings of WWE with the Fox deal, with Brock, Fox has sort of taken that Brock Lesnar, Kane storyline, and USA Network for Raw has taken that Braun Strowman and Tyson Fury storyline. That'd be interesting to see what happens with that. I know what. It'd be interesting to see what happens with what they say with WWE. Because either way, it's a win-win for Tyson Fury. It's not a legitimate fight. Uh, Mitch, are you honestly saying that Tyson Fury didn't fight off 20 security cars and then beat up half the WWE locker room? I mean... Are you genuinely saying that Triple H hasn't put people through a steel I mean, we, we, saw, we saw that. It did happen. It's on camera footage. I've but, seen it live, Mitch. But the legitimacy is in question. Legitimacy? But... Have you heard what he's talking about? <laughs> it's a joke. Real fighters, real men, wearing spandex. It's what we all want to see. <laughs> Definitely. Bring the 619 back in. RK Rey Mysterio. Yeah. you telling me that Rey Mysterio can't beat men twice his size. I've seen it, Mitch. I grew up I... on Rey Mysterio. Stop ruining it. Ruining this fu- this image that no. I have in my head. Sweet. John Cena, hustle, loyal, and respect. He genuinely does things. Floyd Mayweather beat Big Show. It happened. I saw Floyd do the Big Show. <laughs> Movement, shoulder rolls, put the knuckle oh, busters on, boom, in the that's... Big Show's face. I love going over because I love doing like <laughs> 2006. That's my era. I can't say I watch no. it like, anymore. No, but uh, it's... I did I did enjoy it back then. Look, it's a bit of fun. It and it people hate fun. on it WWE. Fun. And they go, well, it's not real. It's just like watching a TV Definitely. show in it. And it's... it's it's just a soap opera that's done it in is. the ring. And going from one sort of fun, bit of fun in the WWE to one bit of fun, it's Fame in the UK. Have you seen the lineup that you've released? I have. And uh, first of all, Scotty T versus Stephen Bear, Geordie Shaw versus Celebrity Big Brother X on the beach, all that. Uh, both wine up merchants. I mean, can you imagine a press conference? I'm assuming Stephen Bear oh, is going to get under the skin of Scott. Uh, uh, Scott. Scott's, he's, well, I don't know what weight it's class they're doing this sure. at because Scott's massive and Bear's not that big, so I'm assuming it'll be some sort of catch 170, weight. 170, 185. Yeah. They're, they're, not, they're muscular, they're, but they're not big, are they? Not I mean, Scott's massive. Scott could, be, Scott could even weight. be a heavyweight. He's huge. Yeah, Bear's not that, that big. Maybe Bear's about my size. But um, in regards to the actual fight, Scott, you'd imagine, would just be too big, but I think Bear's far more athletic than Scott. Scott's, like, quite a bit He's of a... sneaky as well, isn't he, Bear? Bear's I mean, I'm watching the challenge guy. right now on MTV. If you're not watching the challenge, get to know the challenge. It's absolutely class, and Bear's <laughs> doing really well. So, uh, Bear's a bit of an imagine. underdog. I think he's probably more athletic than Scott, so... Maybe he has a bit of a chance, but it's a bizarre lineup, and I'm actually not against celebrity MMA fight, and I'm on board. It brings eyes to the sport. I've always been a big fan of Aaron Chalmers getting involved because he's bringing in that MTV crowd. It's ultimately only going to be a good thing. I've mm-hmm. heard that Liam Gallagher and Robbie Williams have reignited that feel <laughs> from where Robbie co- uh, Liam used to call him Blobby Williams. They're back. Who wins that one, Liam, Robbie? That's not a fight to make. Let's have Liam and Noel in there. Let's Liam get- and Noel, as in Liam throwing plums at him. Liam Gallagher, like Noel Gallagher. Let's have it. 
Let's no, so have I actually fancy no, because I think Liam would be... I mean, in what world is Liam Gallagher passing a drugs test? I don't even know if no would have passed I mean, that it'd be, one. It'd be the thing... I think Noel's clean nowadays, but you know the things at Fairground where they hit the bell? The bell would literally fly off <laughs> yeah. Liam Gallagher's chest. He'd be like, yeah, that would, are you joking? Would get out. Just get out. Get, <laughs> get out, Liam. In the roof. You have everything in your system. There isn't a drug you're not on. Yeah, that would be interesting. But yeah, Flame, Flame have got some good good eyes on them now. They did... They, they bring new eyes to the sport as, you know, this year, these past few years, social media has really brought up now, of course, we've always had these sort of celebrity events where there's been X to singing, you know, these reality shows. But having something that brings eyes to a sport of MMA, especially in the UK, it's needed. And we've got some young eyes coming. You know, we've got KSI Logan Paul in boxing. We need, we've got a load of YouTubers in the MMA, in fame MMA fighting. So it's bringing new eyes, younger eyes to a sport, which is growing. And it's... It's pretty beneficial for MMA. Now, MMA's got a younger demographic already than boxing has. It's just going to be fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some of the names. I know JMX, the YouTubers on there. Dapper laughs, if anybody remembers him. I mean, I think yeah, every feminist in the world would be wanting to step in uh, a cage with Dapper laughs. And yeah. Sam Gowland off Love Island as well. So they're getting a decent thing together. I mean, I saw Fame and Mare, I think it was in another country, but uh, in they, Poland, they had, I, think. I think they had a woman versus a midget. Like, what on earth is going on? They're making these bizarre matchups, and I'm not sure how <laughs> they're getting sanctioned, but anything that brings publicity to the sport is a good thing, in my opinion. Definitely. And let's talk a little bit about boxing, just to close the show. Anthony Crowley, the farewell fight, the man from Manchester, the first fight I ever went to was uh, an Anthony Crowley fight. Aww. He was a hero of mine. A man that's just done so much. I mm -hmm. mean, a guy that was losing at British level. To, he lost to a journeyman in Yusuf El Hamidi. He was losing to Gary Sykes. He lost at British level to Derry Matthews. And he just wouldn't give up on that green. He kept scraping wins together at British level. The likes of John, John Murray, Kieran Farrell, etc., etc. He finally gets a world title shot. And then he notices a sound in his neighbor's, root, uh, his neighbor's house. He just has a look over. A window's been smashed and there's a burglar in there. He chases two burglars down the street. He puts his own life on the line. Boom, he's hit by a concrete slab. He's told he probably won't box again. He breaks his ankle and he doesn't give up on his dream. He gets back into trading. He does that walk at Manchester and He beats Darles Perez and it's given a draw. His world title opportunity is all over. He gets the rematch. He's the underdog again and then he stops Darles Perez. In the fifth round, becomes world champion. Adam Smith, the passion in his voice and commentary, that voice, the million dollar crawler, he's done it. Anthony's nearly crying. You can tell how much it meant to him. This boyhood dream, he never, ever, ever gave up, no matter how much adversity he faced. He became champion of the world. Mm -hmm. He was offered a defense against Ismail, Oro Ismail Barroso. And I remember I went to the public workout that day and I saw Anthony Crowley and I got a pit with him. And then I got a pit with Ismail Barroso. And I remember fist bumping him. Mitch, no word of a lie, my hand could have disintegrated. That was the hardest fist I have ever felt in my life. <laughs> Ismail, I don't know what they do in Venezuela, but he had like a. It was literally like like punching a wall is yeah, what it felt probably like. Punch tree, probably been punching trees or yeah, something exactly. in, in and open workout. People had seen what Ismail Barroso had done to Kevin Mitchell in the fight before. He'd absolutely wiped the floor with Mitchell, and we assumed that Crawler Mitchell was going to be this huge domestic fight. Mm -hmm. Crawler took the fight. Crawler was never, ever, ever going to duck anybody in a million years, and he beat Ismail Barroso in his own game. He soaked up the storm early doors. He came for it, landed another body shot, beat Barroso. He dared to be great against Jorge Linares. The fight didn't quite work out his way. He was beat. In the rematch, he was beaten comprehensively, but he still had the bullets to go in there and do it again. And I remember in the 12th round where Joe Gallagher was desperate to pull him out. Mm -hmm. Anthony refused to quit. He comes back. He beats Ricky Burns, a three-weight world champion. Look at that line of fights, Mitch. Perez, Perez, Barroso, Linares, Linares, Burns. That is world-level operating at its finest. And then he beats Dow Jordan, yep. who's another world-level operator. He dares to regret again against Vasily Lomachenko. He gets knocked out, but there's absolutely no, no shame, shame in that. that. No shame in that Vasily one. Vasily Lomachenko, one of, not only the best today, but one of the greatest of all time. He gets this far, farewell do at the Manchester Arena. I think it's a disgrace, honestly, that he's not headlining the bill and they've got Katie Taylor because as good as Katie is, mm -hmm. Anthony Crawler's the draw here. The people are turning up to say goodbye to their Manchester hero. He's the one they want to... who they love, effectively. Katie Taylor, I don't know... I think... I think what she's done for women's boxing is fantastic. She's brought more eyes to the spot. A lot of women will look to her and see a platform. So mm -hmm. that is per a perfect... And I'm just saying that from a business perspective that Crawler should be headlining that card. He's a fighter I love. I'm going to be in there with the Manchester Evening News that night, so I'm going to be front row. Looking forward to it. That's and hopefully, a very good opportunity. as a dream come true, I might get to speak to Anthony. If I get the opportunity to, I'm going to tell him 
what a hero he's been to me throughout my time watching combat sports. So just a bit of a speech to Anthony Crawler. I think Steve loves him as well, obviously. Yeah, for those. He's been on the channel yeah. for Steve and a couple of times on, yeah. on the warm down. He's He's been a good good guest down down in the studio. So yeah, it'd be good to see see what he does. I think, does he coach? Is he in the coaching? Yeah, he's a coaching bit now. now. He's moving over. He legitimately is one of the nicest people in the world. And it's a shame that that Terry Flanagan fight never happened because that could have been brilliant at the time. Two world champions, both from Manchester. Oh, yeah. One red, one a blue. One was undefeated at, t- at the time and the other had this unbelievable story. For me, that would have done all Trafford. But, yeah, that's, that's But crazy. it wasn't to be and... From a selfish way, that's quite nice because I really like both of them. They're both they're both top fellas, and uh, Terry would be another one that would be great to get on the channel at some definitely, point. Definitely. But as I'm saying, good luck to Katie Taylor this week. I'm going to try and become a two weight world champion, and all the luck in the world to Anthony Crawler. I'll be in there one last night. We're going to hear James Arthur's song one last time. You I'm know. very jealous of you right and, uh, now. Well, you can very always jealous. buy a ticket, Mitch. I, and I'll then try. Uh, the mil- you know million dollar bill, Whitney Houston. We'll see him walk to the ring one last time. Could there be tears? Maybe. It's going to be hard to say goodbye to Anthony, but we've got to do it. Is there anything else you want to add to this show, Mitch, before we sign off? I think that's it. We will be live for UFC 2004. I think we're going live about 3 a.m. for an absolutely stacked card, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and put notifications on so you don't miss it of course because YouTube is a little funny like that when we go live they don't always like to tell you and uh, we've got a tap out as well which we'll be filming later tonight me and Harry Williams the journalist Severe MMA we're going to be debating who wins Nate Diaz or Jorge Masvidal who wins Darren Till versus Calvin Gaslam and is the baddest book of motherfucker t- I'll tell you what it's always a nightmare to get out maybe of that's that. why I shortened it to be MMA yeah that's what that's, I'm going to do that as well and in fact no I've got I've got to do it you know what is Bruce Buffer going to say it or not this weekend and the new Better's Motherfucker Show. I hope so. And I hope that there's some parents who are absolutely seething that their children are watching oh, this awesome, terrible sport. Turns over to Crown Jewel instead. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I want yeah. Tyson Fury to challenge Nate Diaz for that because oh, we're just losing the rules. So we can get like Stephen Bear and Scott Geordie Shaw oh. to like get involved as well. Oh. But anyway, <laughs> thank you for joining us. Tune in to Tap Up. More importantly, tune in to The Watch Along. Stephen Housen, I think, will be joining us for that. I've been James Sweeten. He's been Mitch Ivey. It's been an absolute pleasure, and we'll join you next week.